Hi everyone, um, today we're going to talk through life and death juxtapositions of time and context. Um, that's in a wider sense about our work uh, looking at Vanitas painting and Vanitas photography and the idea that we're going to in some way merge or mash up the contemporary world in which we live now with a much more historical context of what the Vanitas format means. So, vanitas, vanitatum et omnia vanitas. That phrase reminds the viewer of transience and brevity. You can see on the screen now um, that vanitas paintings are, are dealing with human life. They're looking at power, beauty, wealth, um, abundance, but also the insignificance of those things if they're material. The material world is so insignificant all our achievements are insignificant. We are over in but a blink of an eye. Um, but what's interesting is that even though we may be being reminded about this transience and about the, the, the silliness of our vanities, nonetheless, it does make for a really beautiful visual spectacle. So the photograph you can see on the screen just now, for example, is carefully crafted so that it meets all of the values of traditional vanitas or memento mori painting. There is nothing in that photograph that would take it out of a sort of 17th century context, apart from the fact that it's obviously a photograph. Um, there is nothing included within the frame that couldn't belong to the 17th century. There's nothing included in the frame that gives us pause or makes us think that there's something bizarre or strange or at odds with the traditional format of vanitas. And that's very different um, in terms of approach to these vanitas photographs. Um, because as you can see in these images, the artists have chosen very carefully to include contemporary objects, yet they're still using them within a, a traditional and 17th century context for painting. So the photographs are full of um, kind of recognisable branding and um, the colours are quite garish um, and there's the inclusion of things that could only belong to now. Now that's really similar also to the device used by Sam Taylor Wood in her still life where we had the plate of rotting fruit and yet we had that blue biro sitting on the table. Those are devices used by artists to jog us from one time into another time or from one place into another place. And in themselves, they're a reminder that time is passing and that time has passed. In the case of still photographs, time has passed from the point of reference, which in this case would be the 17th century Dutch painting. We've looked at Peter Kleis and Harman van Steenwijk, for example. And it sets us in the present moment, but of course, Later, the present moment now in which we look at um, a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts or we see um, some Budweiser beer, for example, those things will in themselves become historic. Those things will in themselves become obscure as time goes by. And particularly the image at the bottom of the screen, there are lots of things there that don't just set us in time, but they set us in a, a political um, context. It gives us a bit of social background about perhaps the photographer but just generally of the moment in which the image is made. You've got the vote badge for example. There's a lot of um, kind of art detective stuff we could do with, with this image. Again as I said not just about the time but about um, the politics and the culture of the time in which the photograph was made. It's very interesting to study that photograph in greater detail. For example, read the spines of the books, see what books are there. The fact that we're looking at um, someone who's chosen to gather together alcohol um, with kind of sports paraphernalia, toys. Um, the top image, I would suggest, is um, in many ways contextualised by the Dunkin' Donuts cup perhaps more than any other object or item. A donut perhaps isn't a political object, 
but we're immediately given a Western sense of what we see um, through that cup. So all of this could link into our notions of allegory, our perceptions of modern life. And I want us to think, can we actually contextualise vanitas in contemporary life? Do we find um, equivalencies between what would have been 17th century values um, where we see our values now, those could be social, they could be moral values. Um, and I wonder if there's a likeness between what a 17th century Dutch painter would have felt and thought about the strangeness of our, um, our alliance with vanity and materialism compared to somebody now. You know, are we aware all the time that we're being influenced by materialism in our culture. I think these photographs raise those kinds of, of um, ideas. Certainly they make me question about my own materialism. And when I think about allegory, symbols, things that are not um, necessarily concrete, um, the representation of those things, what do I choose to photograph that says something not just about me, but about the time in which I live? and that shines the light on the, the ridiculousness of believing myself essentially to be immortal because of the things I have, the things I possess. Um, I want us to think also that even when we don't have obvious objects setting us in time, that there are other elements that can put us in time too. So the question here is how does this image juxtapose old and new? And what meaning could this have in context of Vanitas more widely? Well, if we look closely at this photograph, though the objects themselves could be seen as timeless, or indeed belonging to uh, the traditions of Vanitas in the 17th century, when we really study it, we see that all those objects are made of plastic. And so the photographer here is playing again with our sense of immediacy. I'm sure there will be one or two people who look at this photograph and think, Vanitas, nothing else about it. But the longer you look at it, of course, the more you realise that there's something um, ironic in it, there's something uh, jolting. Uh, and all the time, it's, it's forcing us to ask questions about our values on objects. And of course, thinking about the context of Vanitas, the value we place on objects, those material things in our sense of abundance and wealth, they're the things that kind of make a joke of us, that we think we're so special or that we think that we have some kind of power because of the material world, which of course we know can't be true. We can't take our material wealth with us after death. Um, this week particularly, I want us to focus on uh, Justine Rees or Rays. She's uh, an American photographer working now uh, she's got an excellent website and I would encourage you to have a look at it um, and particularly to look at her Vanitas series. She has lots of different things on there. You'll also be able to see, for example, her still life work and there are correlations between what she's done for Vanitas and what she's done in still life. But specifically in her um, Vanitas work, we're looking at, again, an artist who's very aware of conventions much the same as Sam Taylor Wood has been in her moving images of rotting fruit or flesh. We're looking at someone who's able to juxtapose old and new and able to jog us from something that is timeless into time. I think in the image you can see on the screen now, there's a real cleverness in that button box with the orange peel because at first glance we have the black background, we have the heavy wooden surface, and we also have a very muted colour palette here. It's a beautiful colour palette, but we're not kind of blown away by something garish um, or incongruous. But when we really think about it, of course, the button box is perspex, it's plastic, it's see-through plastic, and the buttons themselves are plastic. And though buttons belong to a wide history, a long history well into the past, we wouldn't have ever found buttons like this in 17th century paintings. Whereas we would possibly have found the orange peel, we would have found the black background and we would have found the wooden surface. 
Um, on the website, there's lots of uh, very eloquent written description and justification for her work. Um, and she said on there, taking inspiration from Dutch Vanitas paintings, these photographs incor incorporate personal artifacts within the traditional construct of still life. So again, this is very similar to Sam Taylor Wood. We're looking at an artist who takes something that is meaningful and personal to them and incorporates it in something that has an element of the timeless, but that sets it not just in time, but that sets it into a personal paradigm. So pairing objects that belong to my grandmother with my own possessions speaks to the concept of memory, familial legacy, and the passage of time. The fact that the objects um, Justine Rees has chosen to, to give to us in these photographs, the fact they belong to her grandmother, for example, that is uh, about lineage, but lineage, of course, is also about time. So the grandmother is set in time in the past. There's something historic already about the collection and archiving of the grandmother's possessions. And there's something also, although we, we don't know, for example, if the grandmother is alive or dead, I actually think reading it, maybe she has passed away, um, that, you know, again, there's this emphasis that life is fleeting. We don't last forever. Um, and the fact that Justine Rees has access to these artefacts to use in her photographs suggests to us that not just time has passed, but that the passing of time has had an incredible and marked effect on her. So, um, if we look at a, a sort of wider portfolio of the artist's work, we can see someone who is interested in that jolt between now and then. Um, there are a couple of examples within our Vanitas work where we don't get the jolt between the past and the present. For example, the, the, the top image, the image above me now, where we have the knife, the surface, uh, and those amazing blue-green leaves on the vegetable. Um, that is essentially a, a timeless image. That could belong to any time, really, from the 17th century onwards. Again, I know it's a photograph, therefore we compress the possibility of historical context further. But nonetheless, there's nothing in it to set it now. Whereas with all those other images, there are these clever little details. The cleverest one by far for me is the one on the far side of the screen, um, where we have the, I think it's laurel, we have the um, melon, we have the egg cup, and underneath that melon we have, she calls it saran wrap, but we would know it as cling film. Now, that's, that's so easy just to gloss over that. And, and kind of believe this photograph to belong to this very, very long, um, time-heavy historical context. But actually the cling film shrinks us right down into the possibility of this photograph only being, let's say, for the last 60 years. Um, and again, taking from her own website what she said herself, she says the incorporation of modern elements such as the saran wrap, plastic, sugar packages, etc, as well as the use of photography itself add an additional layer of nostalgia and irony when viewed within the historical framework of Vanitas painting. Both the decomposition of the natural, that's the rotting fruit and wilting flowers, and the breakdown of the man-made objects reference the physical body, life's impermanence, and the inevitability of death. What a perfect way to sum up what she is doing. And so, of course, the task this week is going to be to create work that's very similar. And I'll, I'll read exactly the task as I've written it. So create a new page on your website. And this page is going to be called Juxtapositions. So we're going to think about balancing within our frames of our photographs old with new, for example, and I've written there, produce a range of still life Vanitas style photographs incorporating old with new objects, universally understood and personally meaningful items and living with dead forms. Um, I also want you to write an analysis of Justine Rees' work, specifically the Vanitas series. So you can go onto her website, you can have a look at what she does. Um, those of you who are confident writers, 
can of course comment on her other work and perhaps draw a comparison between let's say her still life photographs and her vanitas photographs both do belong in some way to still life but I want you to include whatever you write on your website page, on the juxtaposition page. And then for those of you who want a bit of stretch and challenge, which I know many of you often do, I'd like you to experiment with moving image. So an example of that would be if you have a lit candle in your frame that you film from a very, very static vantage point so the, the camera's not moving about, but that you simply blow the candle out. And so we can't, we're watching that happening and then the, the smoke moving away from the wick. Um, you could also do things like zoom in and out on a specific object that perhaps has a loaded meaning within the frame. So where at first we may see a complete scene, you might have a, a significance or believe there to be a significance of a single object within that frame. In the Justin Rees example above, it could be that at first glance again, we're just taking this as a kind of Vanitas style photograph. Then we realize that the bowl is, a, is, is it like a, a plastic coated party plate or party bowl. It might be that if I were the photographer here, I would zoom in on that very, very gradually so that the attention is unavoidably focused on that object. Um, and again, my demonstration there's my uh, set scene at home. Um, I had an assistant. My my brother held up the, the black fabric for me so I could close down on the light so I didn't have too much ambient light hitting those objects. Um, I just had some black fabric at home. I draped it and I turned a box upside down. On it, I put the following items. I had a plate with grapes, which you may remember for another photo shoot I did in another presentation. I've kept them. I haven't got rid of them. I knew I would need them for something, and this is it. They're getting really disgusting now. Though they're not becoming putrid, they're still wrinkling back. They're quite raisin like now while still on their stalk. And I've also included an apple. Now, there's an interesting detail that I want you to pay attention to about that apple. I have deliberately kept the barcode sticker on it from the supermarket. Because again, much like the blue biro in Sam Taylor Wood's still life moving image, much like the plastic button box in Justine Rees images, I need to contextualise this image within my own time. I'm saying that this image is from now. The other thing that does that on really close inspection would be the fact that though I've got gold coins in there, um, those gold coins are chocolate coins uh, that you would get in your stocking at Christmas. And the other thing I've got is I've got some sweets, um, some Korean sweets. And if you look closely, you can, of course, see um, the, the kanji symbols on there. Now, that also fits me into a time frame because I doubt very much in the 17th century whether we'd have um, small sweets wrapped in paper with those kanji uh, symbols printed on them like that. Other things that are timeless, of course, is dead flowers. I'm juxtaposing, juxtaposing life and death here between the apple, which is still waxy and whole, it's um, ready to be eaten, it's ripe, with the dead flowers and of course those rather old and disgusting looking grapes. The sweets are in contrast with the grapes. Again, this is juxtaposition all the time. So I've got these natural foods and fruits and then I've got these highly manufactured sweets um, and the candle you know that candle is a precarious thing it could blow out at any second much like life is snuffed out at any second um, I want you to experiment with colour temperature saturation and sharpness now I post-production raised the sharpness so that there was a bit more sense of the wrinkles on those um, on those grapes I really want you to get on with texturizing your photographs, not the backgrounds. The background should just be black, as dark as it possibly can be. 
the shadows themselves also should be really dark and again you can see in my setup photograph I, ha I did have an additional light source so I was bouncing light just from one point it was a single source light the only other light in the frame was the candle I'm going to show you on the next page um, where I actually turned the light out and I was just using the candle light um, but again on back to these words like saturation I took the saturation down but I raised the colour temperature. So I'm picking up those pink, warm, sort of body-like hues, I guess. There's again a corporeal sense in this. But I was taking the saturation down so nothing is garish. Um, and I also made sure that I had a full spectrum, full colour spectrum representation. What I mean by that is in our natural looking at things, we like to find colour harmonies, but also colour balance. And we all know that blue, yellow and red are the primary colours. There's a presence of each of those colours, no matter how small, within that frame. And it gives a kind of uh, cohesion to the image. So I have yellow in the gold coins, I have yellow in the flame of the candle, I have the red in the apple, I have the red on the the sweets and that's also where I have the blue and then I have lots of other um, actually very historical pitched colours so the particular hue for example of those grapes that very deep and rich plum that dark plum and then that amazing sage dark green those are references for me to 17th century painting. Those kinds of colour pigments are pigments or colours that we would see from the original Vanitas or in the original Vanitas paintings. So, um, to recap, I would like you to think about juxtapositions. I want you to think about old with new and I want you to think about things that are universally symbolic that we understand like grapes or clocks or flowers. And I want you to put things that are personally meaningful in there as well. So for example, the supermarket sweets for me, the apple with the barcode from Sainsbury's, these are about things that are about my time, my little life. And I really, really look forward to see what you're going to produce. Good luck.